I'm Jose Ignacio La Torre. I'm the director of uh, CQT. Quantum technologies is really amazing because you are dealing with the edge of knowledge. You are dealing with the ultimate control of matter, with the ultimate laws of nature. Singapore is a very, very special place in research because it's a lighthouse for Asia. There are many, many countries that look at the way Singapore does research, and the example is CQT. Our center is organized in three fundamental pillars. First, we do quantum computation. We try to make a device that becomes a quantum computer. We also do quantum sensing, so we create the best sensors in the planet, the best you can do with quantum mechanics to sense fields, gravity, and we also have quantum communications. Quantum communication should be safe, and the ultimate safety is provided by quantum mechanics. This is what we call quantum cryptography. CQT offers the students a really spectacular environment to develop themselves. It's a very international place. We have uh, students from everywhere in the planet. And more importantly, CQT brings together many branches of research. We have engineers, we have mathematicians, physicists, we do computer science, sensing, we do all parts of quantum technologies together. So when a student comes to CQT, he's exposed to all the knowledge around quantum technologies. So it's a very complete center. Our research in quantum cryptography in satellite this is really an amazing fact that we are in the space. We have a team which is sending nanosatellites to put it in orbit and distribute the keys. My name is Alexander Ling. I'm an associate professor at the physics department at NUS. I'm also the director for the quantum engineering program. At NUS, we actually have several faculty members who are experts in quantum communication. Together, we study you know, the basic concepts of quantum communication, we work on the technology to make it practical, and we are starting to see also how this technology can actually be used by industry. I got started in quantum communication about 20 years ago. Quantum communication is very exciting because, you know, with trying to communicate in a way that's fundamentally different from the past. We are not just sending signals from one point to the other, but we are looking for the correlations once those signals have been transmitted. And in this way, we think that we can connect up quantum devices in a network that can allow this network to do more things than what a conventional network can do. So my research group studies how we can deploy quantum communication technology on satellites. And the main reason why we are studying satellites is because if you're sending quantum signals over optical fiber, there is a range limit. The signals will get lost after about 100 kilometers or so. So if you want to build a quantum communication network today that can span the globe, you have to use satellites. And that's the main reason why we have designed satellites like Spooky One, where we're testing some of the advanced technology in space. Spooky One is actually a small shoebox-sized satellite that has enough capability to test a quantum experiment. This quantum experiment generates entangled photons, which we think is important for the quantum internet of the future. Singapore is actually a very good place to test out this technology. We are a very small island, we have a very good optical fibre network, and we hope to connect this optical fibre network through satellites to other networks overseas. So this makes NUS a natural place to actually anchor this research. Our industry collaborations cover both Singtel and ST Engineering. We collaborate with Singtel to study how ready the network is for quantum communication, and we have a collaboration with ST Engineering to prepare um, devices that can be plugged into that network. Some of the future goals of this communication research at NUS is actually to try and make the cost of the quantum communication equipment lower so it can be more easily deployed. At the same time, we have more ambitious goals like taking part in the design of a future quantum internet. We are trying to bring the quantum communication and the quantum computer parts together. So hopefully by putting them in a unified form, we can work towards the quantum internet. Another amazing project at CQT is the construction of atomic clocks. It turns out that the ultimate precision in the measure of time is quantum mechanics. The tic-tac of the Earth is quantum. And uh, here we do have one of the clocks with the best precision in the planet. It has a precision of one part in 10 to the 17, which is one second in the age of the universe. Which is 
simply outstanding. My name is Murray Barrett and I am a PI at CQT. Air Group works on the development of optical atomic clocks. So one of the biggest problems that is actually faced with atomic clocks today is how do you know that a clock in Singapore is as good as a clock in the USA? Because at the end of the day, they are so sensitive to even things like the gravitational potential that we have no way of directly comparing them to know whether or not they're performing to that level. So in our particular case for our atomic clock, we're actually exploring an atomic species that no other group in the world has actually explored at all. A lot of our work has actually been investigating the true potential of this particular atom for atomic clock applications. One of the things that's actually very unique about our particular species is that it supports multiple clock transitions within the one atom. Now what makes lutetium interesting with that multiple clock transitions is we can make comparisons within the one atom. And so if different clock frequencies agree for a clock in Singapore versus a clock in America, then we can be pretty certain that those two clocks are actually operating at the same level of performance. And that's something that our system uh, offers that no other system in the world can actually do. The other thing that is important for iron-based clocks, which is what we've actually got, all iron-based clocks today are a single iron device, and we have been working towards extending that to many irons, which in effect improves the performance of the clock. And so we would like to be able to work towards that, to be able to show that clock operation can happen with many irons, and therefore we can continue to improve these clocks. Another thing that my group is working on is the development of chip scale atomic clocks and the basic idea there is how do we take a lab laboratory full of equipment and reduce it down in size to something that's much more amenable to actually carrying it around or at least transporting it around outside of the laboratory. Why I think quantum technologies is important is that it, to me it is a natural evolution of what we're actually doing today. So we're manufacturing things and we are attempting to make them smaller and smaller and as you make those things smaller eventually quantum principles start playing a role. So it's important to understand quantum technologies from the perspective of continuing that manufacturing but also it's important to understand whether or not those quantum effects can be utilised to make better and improved devices. We are always striving to make them better, to look for new applications, for uh, more accurate timing devices. Let me tell you a little bit about the quantum computer. This is really exciting. So it turns out that by going down to very low temperatures, this is a millikelvin, minus 273 degrees. The laws of quantum mechanics dominate matter at that level. And we managed to have superconducting currents where we codify a state that we call the zero and the state that we call the one. And they can be in superposition and we can manipulate them twist them in any way we want. So we managed to do computations with superconducting currents at minus 273 degrees. This is really a spectacular achievement. And we do have here a team which is just producing our next generation of quantum computers. I'd like to stress the relevance of having a quantum computer in Singapore. Besides the fact that they are a beautiful machine made in gold because we want to protect it against any disturbance and any magnetic field. A quantum computer provides the means to attack problems which are untractable using classical computers. So that means that the country that has a quantum computer may address issues about security, quantum chemistry, artificial intelligence, about finances. If you don't have a quantum computer, you are out of the game. And the chance for Singapore to be in the game is what we are doing at CQT. CQT does generate knowledge at the edge, but as important as generating the knowledge is to transmit this knowledge to new generations. So we have a very intense program to create talent, and not average talent, but the most qualified talent that you may imagine. This is why we have dozens of nationalities in our institute. Our PIs and our students come all over the planet. CQT stands as a really international hub for research, and we think that this is the way to do research in the 21st century.